Hi everybody, I'm Brian Mullins the Fox. Welcome to episode 2 of season 2 of the Brian Mullins the Fox Show. We're going to be talking about a lot here. And to start things, at first when I saw that Trump won, first thing Wednesday morning, I wasn't surprised at all. I actually found it kind of funny, as in it's hilarious because Kamala deserved to have lost because she had nothing at all to run with other than my abortion, my corporate greed, my prices, and my Trump hate, and so on and so forth. Man, this election was intense for me the night of, and the morning after greatly lowered my anxiety, and when I first told my father about who won that morning, he just had a brief outburst of fucking laughter. <laughs> because it's funny, when it comes to Mongrel's reaction to the results of this election, I will cover that this Monday, or Veterans Day, on my drama archive. I think this election is a repeat of 2016. If they can finish counting in Arizona and they don't make any further delays or any of these stupid potential recount attempts. And I believe that the left's reaction is a repeat of both 2016 and 2020. Ironically, some if not most leftists are calling this election fraudulent and stolen when they were the same ones who shat on MAGA hats back in 2020, rightly so for saying the same shit they're saying now. And I don't have to waste my breath when it comes to how fucking ironic it is for a liberal or far left Democrat voter much less a far leftist saying the exact same fucking thing that MAGA hats were saying back in 2020. Let's just get straight to the reactions before I say my piece. After I do, I'm gonna share you some post-election memes. Only two of them. So yeah, let's get this show on the road. By the way, we're only going to be reacting to five of the countless post-election anti-Trump meltdowns, which the vast majority of it comprises of spurgy millennials and, yeah, some spurgy pieces of shit in my own generation. The Zoomers, fake crying, not a single tear drops down across their face. So, let's just start with the first one. Kamala Harris is spanking Donald Trump's ass right now, and we are going to know that she has won the presidency before the night is over on November 5th. Save this, come back to it, I don't care. You want some facts over feelings? Look at the percent of women that are voting compared to men in the blue wall states of Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. It's double digits. Look at the exit polls in those states. They are overwhelmingly 20 plus percent saying they voted for Kamala Harris. Look at Georgia and the record turnout. You're seeing people in North Carolina marching to the polls with marching bands. What the hell? Like, that is an insane amount of energy when people are literally leading parades to the polls. You are seeing in North Carolina Mark Robinson trailing um, his opponent by like 18%. You don't think those people are going to come out and vote for Kamala Harris as well? You're seeing states like Florida and Arizona that have abortion on the ballot, and these people are coming out in droves to protect their fundamental rights and bodily autonomy. Look at states like Nebraska, where Donald Trump is only a plus five in Nebraska. Look at Iowa in the bombshell of report from Ann Seltzer coming out that Kamala Harris is leading Iowa by three points. So to the fuck your feelings crowd, fuck your feelings, MAGA. You have zero shot in this election. I don't care what you feel. I don't care what you tell me about poly market and foreign money and untraceable Bitcoin flooding map. Look at the facts. One candidate has money. One candidate is completely broke. One candidate has so much enthusiasm. We're going back to 2008 levels and above. Do you know what happened in 2008? Yeah, you got your asses spanked then too. So all of this is leading us to a complete and utter blue washout of these Republicans. Nate Silver has said there's like a one in nine something billion percent chance that all these polls calling this race are actually correct. There's no chance that these polls are as tight as they're showing. It is just complete hogwash for every legitimate poll out there. There's like 20 plus Republican paid polls. Kamala Harris is swinging that ass right now and we are going to know the results on election night. We don't have all these mail-ins like we had in 2020. You cannot compare 2020 to this. She does not need the type of firewall that she had in 20, that Biden had in 2020 because so many people were voting by mail. That's not the case anymore. That's not the case. So we are going to know these results so much faster and a lot of these states are on the East Coast. So when these polls close at 7 or 8 o'clock Eastern, we are going to know so much of the results so early, and the victory is going to be so overwhelming that she is going to have it sewn up before the end of the night. So say it, market, don't care. Say you're going to come back and find me. I welcome it. Bring it on, Naga. You are going down. Okay, so the first one comprises of so many fucking errors. First of all, you can't just use exit polls before an election concludes as results when it comes to who wins or who loses. You have to wait until every fucking vote is counted. Or, wait until the point to where in any of these battleground states, Kamala cannot supersede or surpass Trump's lead, okay? I know you fucking hate Donald Trump, but guess what? He's only going to be president only for the next four goddamn years. And you know what happens after that? He's gone. He and no president will ever be able to serve a third term. Just stop worrying about it. It's just four more fucking years. All right? Maybe in 2028, when my furry channel turns a decade old, you would see who would be running for president on both party tickets. 
Kamala lost presumably all of these background states again assuming Arizona also goes for Trump and none of these fucking lefty politicians in either the House, Senate or even local elections fuck with the results to try and get their candidate on their side to win. Let's get to the second one before I get too pissed off to continue on. Well, Donald Trump is now our 47th president of the United States of America. This election was not even close, which I find odd considering Kamala Harris's rallies. However, how can that compete when you have Elon Musk paying a million dollars per day to encourage people to vote for Donald Trump? Well, back in 2016, Hillary Clinton's rallies had a lot of people, and her rallies were fucking huge. And you know who else's rallies were huge in 2016? Trump. In both 2016 and 2020. The problem is for 2024, it isn't always as powerful as it used to be. But that's okay. He made up for it because he outperformed himself in comparison to 2016 and 2020. I want to take this moment to congratulate those of you who voted for Donald Trump, which was the overwhelming majority of Americans. You chose to vote for a dictatorship, and that is what you will get. America is no longer the land of the free. You have chosen by siding with Donald Trump to throw our United States Constitution and our United States flag in the garbage. Personally, I am embarrassed. I am ashamed to call myself an American. In fact, I no longer call myself an American. What the fuck is wrong with this guy? It's like one bad president and it's bye-bye constitution. But the problem is you are an American. You were born American, you voted American. If you don't like it, you can leave this country. You can no longer be American. You can go to Canada, you can go to England, you can go to France, you can go to Spain, you can go to Italy, you can go to fucking Romania, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, or South Korea, just to name a bunch of them. But you can't move into North Korea because that's exactly the country you're talking about America being just because Trump was elected for his second and last non-consecutive term. And this is the first time since Grover Cleveland did exactly that, but in the late 1800s. You can't just be characterizing America as North Korea. A starving population, droughts upon droughts, a wildfire here and there, totalitarian rule. If you try to escape the country, you'd be killed, and you'd be lucky if you'd moved to South Korea unscathed. Knowing what true democracy is, you're not any one of those people who had to escape for their lives away from the hellscape known as North Korea. Donald Trump winning is actually far better than if Kamala Harris were to have won. She wouldn't have given a single fuck about any issue, and this country would have been far worse off than it was even four years ago. And if you don't like the election results and you want either a recount or a complete overhaul and audit of the vote so that your favorite candidate can win, fuck you and die in a fire. Let's move on to the next one. So the election between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris has not been called yet. We do not know who the winner is, but it is pointing in one direction. And it's not final, but I just wanted to say that America failed women tonight, primarily. Trump has insulted women, berated them, has been found liable in court for assaulting a woman. And he took women's reproductive rights away. And instead of standing up to that, people voted for it. And um, we failed our daughters, our mothers, our sisters, our wives tonight. America failed them. We failed them. It is unfortunately the reality of the situation. Um, so I'm sorry to everybody out there who will be impacted by what may come. But the problem is we do know who wins and who won. It's Donald Trump. Just because not every vote has been counted doesn't mean you can't call it for a certain candidate 
if the other candidates can't supersede the lead of the other in any of these battleground states like I said earlier, or can be convincing enough to win that state in the first place. You can't just say it's not final just because your candidate didn't fucking win. That's the same shit that MAGA hats did in 2020. And your only fucking goal right now, if you want to recover properly, is to not become them as they've become you before. Alrighty, the final three reactions will be this. The next one will be about women crying and bitching about Donald Trump winning. The next one is when I'll be covering anti-Trump 2024 election conspiracy theories and giving you a little bit of a rant and show you the two memes at the end. So, brace yourselves. This is a message for me to any of these women on TikTok, X, and any other social media platform bitching and melting down, crying fake crocodile tears about Donald Trump winning this election. Number one, it isn't about your body. Two, it has never been about abortion rights. Abortion is never a human right, never was and never will be. It is a privilege for rich, lefty, liberal white women to cuck other men, have too much promiscuous sex, and contract a few diseases here and there along the way. If it really was about bodily autonomy, which is a paradox by the way, you are really a fucking hypocrite. Because your will supersedes any and all points of responsibility. Stop having too much promiscuous sex. Stop being a whore. Stop being a slut. Stop selling your body on OnlyFans much less your pussy, your breasts, and your ass crack. Nobody wants to see that. I don't go to OnlyFans and share pictures of my ass, my dick, my nutsack, or any of that shit. You do not share or even take photos of your naked body. Just stop, have some fucking values for once, have some standards, women, and save those eggs. If you're a woman and if you want to hurt, kill, maim, or otherwise deplatform any Trump supporter, and you're a woman at that who has no standards, can't care to control themselves and what they do with their own fucking bodies, because it's mainly about responsibility, not bodily autonomy. If you really hate men so goddamn much, get a vaginal hysterectomy, you fucking cunt. Cut your fucking woman's sleeve off and show all of us, including me, what cards were up there. Because I'm pretty goddamn sure you might have contributed to one, maybe two suicides in the past five goddamn years. In short, women, if you don't like Trump being president, and I'm only talking about liberal women, not conservative women or other women who do have standards to an extent, get over it. It's only going to be four more years and that's it. Now let's move on. Now, let's read a good portion of a Wikipedia article about the 2024 election, which you could just look up. I don't have to put it in the description box down below, but it would be nice if I did. In this section called Stolen Election Conspiracies, following Trump's victory, social media users on X, predominantly liberal or left-leaning, shared election denial conspiracy theories, claiming that millions of ballots were left uncounted, and there being something not right with the election. Such posts falsely claiming Trump stole the election peaked at noon the day after at 94,000 posts per hour, with many receiving amplification and gaining over a million views each. According to Gordon Krovitz, the CEO of the media rating system NewsGuard, the phrase Trump cheated received 92,100 mentions on the platform since midnight until the Wednesday morning after. One major so-called basis these fake claims were founded upon was that Joe Biden won 20 million more votes in his prior election bid than Harris did in hers. At the time these fallacies were disseminated, votes were still being counted in many states. An estimate around the time using the Associated Press vote percentage total found that 16.2 million votes across 20 states and Washington DC had yet to be counted. Statistical analysis of voting asserted that despite continued counting, the projections were already set and new ballots would not sway the outcomes of any of the states and DC. US Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency Director Jen Easterly 
refuted the false claims and wrote in a statement that there was no evidence of any malicious activity that had a material impact on the security or integrity of our election infrastructure. If there's no evidence or proof of any widespread or mass scale voter fraud, Democrats, liberals, far lefties, communists, then I got one message for you. Either accept that there was no fraud or that Harris lost. Quote, Erot Demonstratum! Now, let's get to the memes. And yes, you heard me say I wasn't gonna waste my breath on these conspiracies. You're right. Let's get to the last two memes, my final statements, and then close off this episode, because it's long enough already. Here's this meme. 2020. The election was stolen from Donald Trump. We demand justice. We demand an audit of the votes. Recounts are necessary and we must take this to the Supreme Court. Re. Fast forward to four years later. This election was stolen from Kamala Harris by Donald Trump. We demand more than just a recount. This means war. Literally, I really do mean we need war. No, you don't, sweetheart. Auditing the votes won't do shit. And finally, here's the last meme. When presidents gave a shit about their hair, which is ironic because they used to wear wigs, which aren't real hair. But the ones that have real hair, and when it comes to their presidency, and how much people take it seriously, no shits were given now. That'll pretty much do for this episode of the Brian Mullins The Fox Show. But before I sign out, I'm going to give you a few messages. Number one, Trump won this election because far more sane people are concerned about the economy, cheaper gas, cheaper groceries, cheaper Thanksgiving dinners, and cheaper post-roast game Christmas dinners. Alright, when it comes to commentary rant videos, as that era ends, I'll see you in the Thanksgiving dinner statistical special. And the same goes for post Rose Game Era Christmas Dinner Special in December. And after that, the commentary rant era is over. That was the second message. And finally, the third message is, there will never be another era like the Roast Game Era of 1998 to 2016. Because children were being slaughtered for not believing in Christmas long before the Muppets and any Jim Henson Muppet-related Christmas specials came on to the Odyssey channel years before it became the Hallmark channel. And that is no coincidence. I'm Brian Mullins the Fox, signing out. See you in the next episode, where I talk about something other than the election. A new topic will come. See you then.